Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Hope everyone is enjoying the Shabbat day. We give all praise to Ahaya, Ashre Ahaya, in the name of Yache Moshiaka and the Ruaka Kwadoshi. And today we are gathered here to go into a discussion on the mystery of the Gentiles being grafted in. Alright, so we'll start with the book of Romans chapter 11 verse 13 and verse 25 to 32. Romans chapter 11 verse 13. For I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. And we see Paul, his letter was written to the Romans, and in this particular section of the letter, he's specifically speaking to the Gentiles, and this is how we know that there were both Jews and Gentiles in the churches already. Continue. Uh, I'm in Romans 11, verse 25. All right. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. That blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Sion the deliverer, and shall turn away unholiness from Yaakov. There we see them that are called the Israelites in spirit and in truth, they shall be saved. Because it has to be fulfilled. But that dispensation of grace, as we had talked about prior in right. that video, about there's a certain amount of Gentiles that has to be awakened and receive the truth. And then the end shall come. And the Israelites shall be saved. And notice, Yahche, he did come and die for Israel to turn away our transgressions. And he came to be a light unto the Gentiles, so that they may be brought out of darkness and see the light which is in Mishiach and Yachin. Continue. But this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. Mm -hmm. That was his covenant. Yachin was his covenant for us. Continue. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. Because the promises were given by oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Continue. For the gifts and calling of Elohim are without repentance. For as ye in times past have not believed Elohim, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Mm -hmm. Even so have these also now not believed, that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. All right. Continue. For Allah hath concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. And this was the mystery of the Gentiles being grafted in. And this understanding, it was already prophesied, but the fullness of understanding it, the apostles, disciples, it didn't all come together like right away. It was a gradual process. So looking at the apostles and the disciples, they preached to the Jews first at Jerusalem because he had told them in Luke chapter 24 verse 46 it says and said unto them thus it is written and thus it behooved Mishiach to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem mm -hmm. so there we see when I was looking into seeing this is literally what happened so it's building up to show it was not that Gentiles weren't going to be saved. Preaching just, it was to start Jew first, then Gentile. When we go to the book of Acts chapter 8, verse 1 to 5, we see that they were preaching in Jerusalem. And then after Stephen had gotten killed, people started scattering to the neighboring cities and other countries fleeing persecution, but they were still preaching to the Jews abroad at that time. 
And remember, in the synagogues, there were Gentiles there already. As we read in the book of Romans, right. that there, there were Gentiles there in the different synagogues all over the world at that time. And so uh, Acts chapter 8, verse 1 to 5. Acts chapter 8, verse 1. And Shola was consisting unto his death. It's speaking of Stephen, Acts chapter 7 is where Stephen got killed. We'll take the opportunity to read it. Continue. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was in Yarochala. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. So we see the apostles stayed in Jerusalem and the disciples and whatnot. They didn't go that far, as we see, right? They went to Samaria. That's right up the road. Right. They were just getting out of Jerusalem. They didn't go that far yet, right? And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Shoalo, he made havoc of the church entering into every house and hell and men and women committed them to prison therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word then philip went down to the city of samaria and preached messiah unto them so he went there because there were jews dwelling there too jump to acts chapter 11 verse 19 so we can see scriptures tell us that they were preaching to jews only at that time Acts chapter 11 verse 19. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Penis and Cyprus and Antioch mm -hmm. preaching the word to none but the Jews only. Now there we see Cyprus. That's the island right next to the land of Israel. Right. And then you have um, it was Antioch. Antioch, that's in Syria. So we can see they started venturing out, yet they didn't spread themselves too far yet. So they're talking to all the Jews in those areas at that time. And going back to the time frame of after Stephen had just gotten killed, um, go to Acts chapter 8, verse 26 to 40. So we can read what transpired with um, Philip and the Ethiopian. Acts chapter 8, verse 26. And the angel of Adonia spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Yahweh unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Yahweh to worship. So notice you have a Cushite man that believed in Allah. Let's continue to see what transpired. Was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. So he's sitting there trying to learn. And it's interesting what's transpiring because to get the fullness of understanding, you have to come to the Israelites. Right. Because the oracles are committed unto them. And the giving of the law and service of Allah pertain unto them. Hence we see the likes of Cornelius having to send for Peter and Philip being sent to the Ethiopian as a preacher of the Jews who the oracles are committing unto and the service of Allah pertain unto must be sent so that men may believe the gospel of peace. So we're seeing how it transpired. Continue. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him, and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I accept some man should guide me? You see, it is amazing the humility of this Ethiopian man. Right. His response had nothing to do with pride. Right. He understood he needed a teacher. He understood he needed help. Continue. And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, 
I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? Of himself or of some other man? So we see what the Spirit sent him there for. Right. To reveal the understanding to the man that was seeking it. Right. And he was evidently from his interaction with God, he was humbly seeking it. Right. A broken heart and a contrite spirit he shall in no wise refuse. We've seen the evidence of it in the scriptures here. Continue. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Yahche. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doeth hinder me to be baptized? It's amazing. The eunuch understood. Right. <laughs> He's like, I need to be baptized in his name. That's how you know that he was preaching in the same thing Paul was saying in Romans 6. You have to be baptized into his death. That's right. The dialogue in itself lets us know what Philip told him. Right. And that's what we also confirm we must be baptized. That's right. In the true names. It's essential for our life. Continue. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Yahweh had Mashiach is the son of Elohim. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the spirit of Ahiah caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more. The eunuch got what he needed. He got the food. Ahiah blessed him. Philip sent on to the next mission. Now, there we see a Gentile was very much preached the word to, believed on the word, baptized in the names, and ordained unto life. And now we're going to look and see when with Peter, when the Holy Spirit fully revealed to Peter, like the Gentiles, they are grafted in and they are given the opportunity to repent unto life. In the book of Acts chapter 10, Verse 120, and we're going to jump to 27 to 48. Acts chapter 10, verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian, a devout man and one that feared Elohim with all his house. So he's a Roman soldier keeping the commandments. All right. And this is showing that they were believers of all nations. Continue. Which gave much alms to the people and prayed to Elohim always. He saw in a vision, evidently, about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of Elohim coming in to him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Adonai? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for memorial before Elohim. And now send men to Joppa, and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. And then we see again, they have to go to the Israelites to get the fullness of what Allah has to say, or what Allah has ordained for them. Continue. He lodged with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance, and saw heaven opened, and a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners, and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, mm -hmm. and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Adonai, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. 
You notice this is a vision. Visions are dark sentences. And so vision is not always literally what it looks like. You've shown certain things and there's an interpretation to them. Right? Similar to. Thank you. That it has to be revealed. So what he's seeing, he's being told, kill, eat. Of course, the law says you can't eat that. Right. So even in his vision, he understands the law still. He's like, no, I can't eat that. And we're going to see. That's why he woke up confused. Like, what was that about? It shows how the value was too. Right. Even in the dream, he was like, I'm not eating that. Like, right. He was real, real devout. Because he knows you can't eat unclean food. Continue. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What Elohim hath cleansed, that call not thou common. And that what was said is the key of what this whole vision was actually about. Right. What Elohim hath cleansed, call not thou common. And you know how you can tell that this isn't talking about food? When has unclean food ever been cleansed? Never. It's not. The law was written. He said, be ye holy as Ahaya Alahayam am holy. In Leviticus chapter 11, the very fact that if you eat unclean food, it will make your soul abominable. There's no cleansing in unclean food. By law, your eating unclean food literally affects your soul. It's not just something carnal that you're doing and it has no weight on the afterlife. It's a complete defilement of the person. Therefore, Elohim has never cleansed or ordained for us to eat unclean food. It's completely against the law. That's how we know this vision was not about food. And it's going to get further clarified to Peter after he wakes up and the Spirit tells him what's really going on. Right. So, so this was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now while Peter doubted in himself what the vision, what he had seen, should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate, and called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise therefore and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing. For I have sent them. And that shows that it was given Peter the, the assurity that this is the work of the Spirit to go with these Gentiles because it was a custom of the Israelites not to eat with the Gentiles because the Gentiles were idolaters. That thing that was commanded is in the book of Jubilees chapter 22 verse 16. So that's what Abraham had admonished us. But of course, the believers, they were able to come into the fold. We have evidence in David's grandmother, great-grandmother, Ruth, a Gentile, that was grafted in and chose to serve Allah and walk according to his laws. Yeah. Right. Continue. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius. This is verse 21. All right, jump to 27 to 48. Okay. In the time, you can read the rest of the story. And we jump into the main parts of it. Well, Acts chapter 10, verse 27. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. So this is when Peter finally made it to Cornelius. And he said unto them, You know how that is an unlawful thing for men that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But Elohim hath shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. So we see by Peter's mouth what the vision was about, right. not to call any man uncommon or unclean. That's right. It was nothing to do with the food. Unclean food is unclean food, and it will abominate your soul. So please abstain from unclean food. Leviticus chapter 11. In Deuteronomy 14, please look into the law and learn about what foods are clean and unclean and flee from iniquity. Okay, uh -huh, continue. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying. As soon as I was sent for, 
I ask therefore, for what intent ye have sent for me? Okay. And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. And he said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thy alms are had in remembrance in the sight of Abraham. Send therefore to Joppa, and call his assignment, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon a tanner by the seaside, who when he cometh shall speak unto thee. Immediately therefore I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now therefore we are all here present before Elohim to hear all things that are commanded thee of Elohim. And Cornelius is ready. He had the whole family there. <laughs> He's like, man, we all we, we waiting to hear this word. <laughs> Please tell us. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that Elohim is no respecter of persons. There we see Jew and Gentile. Right. Uh, glory, honor, and peace to everyone that worketh good. That's right. All right. Continue. But every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. That word still holds true today. It cannot be disannulled. Right. All right. Continue. The word which Elohim sent unto the children of Israel. Preaching peace by Yahche HaMashiach, he is Adonai of all. That word I say ye know, which was published throughout all Judea, and began from Galilee, after the baptism which Yachanan preached. Elohim anointed Yahche of Nazareth with the Ruach HaKodosh, and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For Elohim was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Yahweh Chalam, whom they slew and hanged on the tree. Him Elohim raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before Elohim, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of Elohim to be the judge of quick and dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. That's the truth. That's right. Through him we are forgiven for former sins. And we have to bring forth that fruit where their repentance, which is bearing the fruits of the Spirit and keeping the law. Continue. While Peter yet spake these words, Ruach HaKadosh fell on all them which heard the words. Then we see faith came by hearing. The Holy Spirit came upon them by hearing. That's right. Continue. And they of the circumcision which so, believed. So the Jews that were there that came with Peter that already believed in Yahche, continue, were astonished as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of Ruach HaKadosh. And there we see that the fullness of understanding the mystery of the Gentiles being grafted in, it was new. To, it was like, whoa, like right. they got the Holy Spirit too. <laughs> continue. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify mm. Elohim. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received Ruach HaKadosh as well as we? Mm. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Adonai. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. So there we see the understanding really started to come out. Right. That they were going to be grafted in. And now jump to Acts 8, 11, verse 1 to 4, and then verse 15 to 17 to see the reaction of the Jews when Peter went back. Okay. Acts 11, verse 1. And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of Elohim. And when Peter was come to Yahweh, they that were of the circumcision contended with him 
saying, Thou wentest in to men uncircumcised and didst eat with them. Like you went in to go eat with them? Because right. you remember we had that law, the, the custom where we can't interact with them. So they're like, you actually went in and did that? And continue. And Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded by order unto them saying. So he recounted everything that happened. Let's jump to verse 15 to 17. We know what happened. He, he told them about the dream. Right. He's like, this is what happened. I had this dream. Such and such happened. I was told to doubt nothing. I went on over there. They told me what, what was shown to them. Told them the word. Holy Spirit fell on them. Everybody's astonished. And that's Holy just what they do. <laughs> Can I withstand Allah <laughs> Higher? <laughs> Jump to verse 15. And as I began to speak, Waka Kodoshi fell on them as on us at the beginning. <laughs> He's like, this is what happened. Continue. Then remembered I the word of Adonia, how that he said, Yakanin indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with Waka Kodoshi. And this is further understand to know things get revealed in due time. Because we know it's the Holy Spirit that made him remember. Right. To see, like, okay, it was said before, here it is happening. Continue. For as much then as Elohim gave them the like gift as he did unto us who believe on the Donia Yadche Neshiach, what was I that I could withstand Elohim? This stuff was foreordained. Right. When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified Elohim, saying, And see, they weren't upset about it. Right. They were like, Yes, like, this is great. <laughs> Soon as they like, okay, oh everybody's like, man, like, okay. man, praise Ahaya, this is good, right? Continue. Then have Elohim also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. There we see. Now everybody understands, like, okay, right. now the Gentiles, they, they're coming in with us. That's right. We're all rolling together now. They're turning, man. Right. All right. Let's continue. And it was for the Gentiles as well because the the Gentiles, the same way Peter said, the Holy Spirit was given upon them as it was given to us at the first. Right. Because they received it by faith the same way we received the Spirit by faith. Right. And it's in uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 to 12. We see, as he was talking about, it was by faith that they partaken in these promises with us now. Let's uh, read in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12, please. Wherefore remember that ye being at times past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, mm -hmm. that at that time ye were without Messiah, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israelah, and strangers from the covenants of promise, so that was before they understood anything about the faith. And as we've seen with Cornelius, the Ethiopian, now that door has been opened for them. Continue. Having no hope and without Elohim in the world. Because any man that doesn't have the spirit has no hope. It's Jew or Gentile. Right. Continue. But now in Messiah Yache. Ye who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Messiah. By believing in that blood, believing in that testimony, hearing that word of faith, now you're brought nigh by believing, being baptized, receiving the Spirit, and working all righteousness in fear of Allah and bearing the fruits of the Spirit. That's right. You're brought nigh. Because you, now you have the family in you. You have the spirit of Mishiaka because you believe on Mishiaka. Yes. And then that light of Mishiaka will bring the spirit of Ahaya and cause that to dwell upon you and lead you to all righteousness, to teach you all good works, which bring you to the kingdom, Jew or Gentile. And this is the gospel. And now let's look at Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 9 to 16. So we can see what Paul was telling the churches. And we can see what the unbelieving Jews were saying at that time to help understand what's going on today. Uh, continue. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. 
For ye remember, brethren, that our labor and travail, for laboring night and day, because we would not be chargeable unto any of you, ye are witnesses, and Elohim also, how holily and justly and unblameably we behave ourselves among you that believe, as ye know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you, as a father doeth his children. For this cause also thank we, Elohim, without ceasing. Because when ye received the word of Elohim, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, as it is the truth, the word of Elohim, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. It's amazing they knew it was the word of Elohim because of the chaste conversation, right. the chaste behavior. Right. The Spirit manifested that this is Elohim. The people that was bringing the word to you, Yache said himself, you shall know them by their fruits. That's right. So you can see what fruit they're bearing. That will give you true understanding of what tree they come from. Okay? For ye, brethren, become followers of the churches of Elohim, which in Judea are in Meshiach, Yache. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews. And there we, we know, talking to the Jews and Gentiles that believe in Thessalonia. Right. Because you say, you're suffering the same things the believing Jews are suffering in Judea. Right. You know, it's showing that the suffering comes with the physical persecution, people trying to kill them, also the everyday war. Because to bear the fruits of the Spirit, it's an everyday war. Right. Your interactions, dealing with different uh, unclean spirits that try to get a reaction out of you to try to test your patience test your long suffering to test your temperance and so on and so forth continue who both killed Adonai and Yache and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not Elohim and are contrary to all men forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved to fill up their sins always, for the wrath has come upon them to the uttermost. There we see, they were trying to stop the Gentiles from hearing the truth. Right. They didn't know it. They were trying to stop prophecy. Right. Because the mystery was that the Gentiles had to be grafted in. Right. Therefore, you know the scriptures are true because it's happening again today. There are ones who are teaching that the Gentiles can't be saved. And this is completely contrary to the scriptures. So we can understand that it was happening before in the ancient times and it's happening again. And we thank Ahaya that he's been gracious to have his records and to teach us that the Gentiles very much are being saved. They will be, it's according to prophecy. And they are very much going to partake in the inheritance of the Israelites and the promises that were given to the fathers by faith in Mishiach Ayache. So, may we be encouraged, Jew and Gentile, to walk according to the law and believe in the blood of Yache Mishiach, be faithful and bear all the fruits of the Spirit. Um, anything else? That's it. Good. Thanks, I hope this was edifying for you all and uh, the email is hebrewreaders at gmail.com. Any questions or comments? You all please pray to Ahaya in the name of Yachim and Shiaka for us, as we will for you, that his hand be upon us and he prosper us in all the works of our hands. And with that, grace and peace be to you that believe in Mishiaka Yache and worship Ahaya Alahayam. And May he bless us all with the Ruaka Kwadoshi. Shabbata Chalom.